Picking stocks is tricky. There's thousands to choose from and you can easily end up with decision paralysis, not knowing where to start. Today, I want to help make that easier by sharing six UK stocks that could make great additions to your portfolio. I'm focusing on the FTSE 100 because I think with the current state of the market, the FTSE represents much better value in 2022. I'm going to be focusing on one stock from different industries to give you guys a diverse range of companies. And as always, this isn't financial advice, so do your own research and make up your own mind before buying any of these stocks. When you watch this video, you may be thinking, are these still good buys? Well, you can either hop in our Patreon community and ask, completely optional, or the software where I use in this video is called Simply Wall Street. You'll see it in more detail throughout this, but you can check it to see whether these are still good buys. It is my favorite stock tool, and I've been given an exclusive two week free trial to hand out to you guys, so I'll leave a link to that down below. And do smash that like button if you'd like to see more of these, as it lets me know you guys find these helpful. So let's dive in. First up, we've got a banking stock, Lloyds, ticker symbol LLOY. The Lloyds Banking Group is the second biggest bank here in the UK, operating since 1760. It's a relic of the FTSE and I'm sure it needs no introduction. Banking stocks, like most others, have had a rough start to the year and Lloyd's is no stranger to that. The firm has had more bad news recently, announcing that they're set to close more than 60 branches across the UK. I think the reaction to this has been more than it should have. Banking is moving more to an online environment and I'm sure this will be a growing trend as time goes on. The older generations are used to popping into a branch to do their banking, while the younger generation want everything done through an app. So it likely won't be worth keeping branches open even if they aren't being used. Sadly, 124 people have lost their jobs, which they are helped trying to reposition in new roles. So we can see the stock is trading at a whopping 64.6% .6 of its estimate of fair value. That means potentially the stock is 64% undervalued, which is super impressive. The earnings are forecast to grow 2.79% per year, and the earnings have grown a whopping 191% over the past year. The good thing about the software, it does actually show me the risks, so I can see it's got an unstable track dividend record, and there has been significant insider selling over the past three months. We can see who its top competitors are, NatWest, Barclays, etc. no big surprise there. We can see the revenue was 16.86 billion with a gross profit of 16.7. What's really impressive is this lovely dividend, which is 4.6%. Now the dividend payout ratio is quite low, which is at 28%. So if you're banking on dividends, I wouldn't specifically buy this company for it, but if it pays a dividend on top of a steady growth, it's not a bad option. But I think with a company being 60% undervalued plus a 4.6% dividend, it's pretty attractive. We can see the history here of how it's paid out the dividend. You can see it did dip in 2020, more likely than not thanks to the pandemic, but you can see how it's forecast to pay out 5.4%, 6% in the future. We can see that Lloyd's in particular isn't a high growth company going forward. In fact, its earnings are only set to grow that 2.8%, which isn't fantastic. But the question is whether it will return to a more fair value. We can see that the company has very strong financial health. While at the moment, its liabilities are more than its assets, long-term its assets should go way higher than its liabilities. You can see its asset level, assets to equity ratio is moderate. Allowance for bad loans is the one it falls down on. It does have a low allowance for bad loans, only at 49%, which I wouldn't be too worried about. And all the other factors are ticked as low and in green, which is impressive. So in terms of the price targets for Lloyd, currently it's a 43p. With the analyst ratings, the average is coming even in at 60p. On the high end is 97p. On the low end is 45. We've got seven buy ratings, four hold and one sell. So on average, this one is looking like it could have very nice returns. So if you are looking for a banking stock at the moment, I think Lloyd's is probably your best bet. Next up, let's stick on a familiar theme and talk about supermarkets. In particular, Tesco, ticker symbol TSCO. Tesco are the biggest retailer in the UK with over 4,000 stores and has held over a 20% share of the industry for the past two decades, which is very impressive. The thing I really like about Tesco above and beyond anything else I'll mention here is their adaptability. In my opinion, Tesco are head and shoulders above the other supermarkets. And that's as an all-in-one supermarket, because let's face it. There are brands we miss when shopping in Aldi or Lidl. I was going to two supermarkets every week, but as of late, 
I'm only picking up a few bits from Aldi now. In fact, in most Tesco stores, there's an entire unbranded section, which feels exactly like shopping in Aldi. They've got their self-scan, great club card rewards, and I was surprised by how good their restaurant menu is now. And recently, they're including things like your sushi counters, not to mention they have by far the best range of gluten-free options for me on the market. It just feels like they're very responsive and adapt much quicker than any of the competitors. So currently, Tesco is trading at 52.8% its estimate of fair value. The earnings are forecast to grow only 2.7% per year, but its earnings grew 186% over the past year, which is massive. And again, it does have an unstable track dividend record. The good thing about Tesco is it is in a much healthier position than a lot of its competitors. Sainsbury's are quite close, Marks & Spencer's isn't in a great position, along with some of the others. In terms of the price performance, you can see the price has been much higher in the past. Even over a much longer period, there could be some potential for it to have massive gains. This price is very stable, it's been less volatile than 75% of UK stocks over the past three months. Now Tesco has a PE ratio of 12.5, which admittedly when you look at this is higher than Sainsbury's. But when you look in more detail, you can see it's got a market cap of 19 billion, PE ratio of 12.5, and its earnings are forecast to grow 2.7%. But Sainsbury's on the other hand with a 4.9 bill market cap, P ratio of 7.2, but its earnings are forecast to go down 12.7% per year, which in my book makes Tesco look much more attractive. Where Tesco does fall down is a future growth, doesn't look fantastic. Again, it's already got such a huge share of the market, but again, where it could do well is becoming more fairly valued. In terms of the financial health, it does have good debt levels, it's reducing its debt. And we can see in terms of the assets, the assets are actually quite close to the liabilities. And again, in the future, the assets should way outdo the liabilities. In more detail here, we can see the debt level is quite satisfactory. It has been reducing its debt from 184% to 47% over the past five years. So you can see how committed they are to reducing their debt levels. And it's also well covered by their operating cash flow at 50%. The dividend yield is currently quite impressive at 4.28%. You can see it is slightly lower than the industry average at 4.7, but again, it's a much more stable company. The company paid a nice dividend of around 4% here but it did take a massive drop in 2015 but since then it's been working hard to recover that dividend payment to the shareholders we can see it went one percent 2.4 percent right back up to 4.9 percent up here and that's suggested to keep going upwards we can see year to date that tesco is down 12.37 percent and with a current price of 256 the low is 239, the average is 317, and the high is 350. So analysts are calling this a strong buy, with nine saying buy, three hold, and zero saying sell. I think Tesco could be a solid pick to any portfolio, and I'm definitely considering picking it up. The income plus the recovery could be pretty nice. And by the way, if I do buy any of these, I will mention it straight away in the Patreon. Sticking somewhat on the same lines, let's move on to something sold in the supermarket. Beverages, and the stock in particular is Diageo. Ticker symbol DGE. Formed in 1997, the majority of its famous brands stretch back much further. The company has over a whopping 200 brands sold in more than 180 countries. Its top six companies responsible for 37% of its net sales were all founded between 1759 and 1974. Smirnoff, Baileys, Captain Morgan and Guinness, just to name a few. The company is down 10% year to date, which isn't too shabby compared to some of its competitors. And the main reason being, and why I think it's a good one to hold this year, is resilience. When a financial crisis strikes, disposable income shrinks, and people seek out valuable products. While demand for premium products flattens opposed to growing, it suggests that those brands boast resilience during a recession, rather than declining, which helps keep the money flowing. Also, of course, it's not surprising that when it's the fun, people love to drink. We can see that the stock is trading 20% below its estimate of fair value. The earnings are forecast to grow 8% per year and earnings grew by 170.9% over the past year. You can see there's a theme with these companies they've all had massive growth over the last year. And it does pay a reliable dividend of 2%, which is a nice change. The risk is that the company has a high level of debt but the debt isn't particularly being used in a bad way, which is good. The company has the ability to ditch that debt if it wanted to. Now, unfortunately, the downside with this company is it is more expensive. The P ratio is 27.4, Compared to some of its competitors, which are as low as 11 or 8.5, 
it is expensive. But the reason it's kind of so expensive is because you're paying for solid brands. These aren't companies that are just going to flutter and disappear overnight. The solid brands have been around for years and years and it is paying you that reliable dividend. You can see it is slightly overpriced and a fair PE would be 23.7 but that's not something I'm too worried about. And you can see it has always pretty much paid around a 2% dividend. So if you want a reliable dividend this will be a good option. It has a good payout ratio which is 56.7% which is easily covered by its earnings. So we can see the current price is 3,691, our low is 2,800, average is 4,372 and high is 5,571. So it's classed as a moderate buy, 12 are saying buy, 4 are saying hold and only 1 is saying sell. So if you're looking for a defensive stock option that can weather a storm, I think DAGO is a very good option. Next up, I think we couldn't make this video without mentioning one of my favourite stocks, the house builder Taylor Wimpy. Ticker symbol TW. Taylor Wimpy is a house builder I've always done well with in the past. With a solid management team and a strong market share, I always feel comfortable having them in my portfolio. As of today, I own 27,700 in Taylor Wimpy. Now, while I'm currently down, I think it just represents even better value for you. The stock is down 32% year to date. I picked them up when they were around 20% down, mostly due to the rising concern that house prices will slump with the rise of inflation. I think this has been somewhat of an overreaction and represents a good buying opportunity. The stock is trading at 52% below its estimate of fair value. The earnings are forecast to grow 10.72% per year and they grew by 156% over the past year but they do have an unstable dividend track record. The impressive thing about Taylor Wimpy is their valuation. You can see on all of the criteria they are ticking as green. The PE ratio to the peers, PE ratio to the industry and against fair value and their ratio is below fair value which is very impressive. You can see here how they compare to their peers. They're at 7.6 PE ratio bang in the middle but the earnings are forecast to grow 10% per year. Year. There are quite a few companies here that are good value. Bellway are another one that might be worth taking a look at, but I don't actually like Bellway Homes, which sounds awful. Give me the gossip. I went to look at some the other day and I just don't think they're as good quality. Sorry to anyone who's with Bellway and I've offended you, just not for me. We can see their current PE ratio is 7.6, but a fair PE would be 17.9, so they are massively undervalued. The share price is currently only £1.19 and a fair value would be £2.53, which is a massive difference. The dividend is currently massive at 7.44%, but as I mentioned, it has been a bit unreliable. You can see in the past 2013, it was only 0.6%, then it was up to 6.4, up to nearly 10% dividend in 2019, and it did drop right back down in 2020 when it was cut, and it has recovered as of recent, 7%, 6.9, 7.4, 8.2, .9, and it's currently at 7.4, and it's forecast to grow right back up to 10%. Now, although you might look at dividends and it might look crazy that they're cutting it, thinking, oh no, what are they doing? I have it all under control. But actually, sometimes companies are not focused on giving you income. While you find some quite boring ones that have got spare cash that want to give it to you all the time, others are going to be using that money to focus on their growth. So actually, them cutting the dividend isn't always a bad option. If they put that cash into the business and it grows more or it makes the company more stable, then it's not a bad thing. Along the surface, of course, it might look like one. So this is really impressive. The current price of Taylor Wimpy is 120. The lowest estimate is 180. The average is 217 and the high is 280. So honestly, I don't think you can go far wrong with Taylor Wimpy. I'll be continuing to buy it and will likely pick up some more soon. Next up is a communications company I recommended earlier this year, Vodafone, with the ticker symbol VOD. Since I recommended Vodafone, they've actually had a pretty amazing year, up 11% so far this year, while the rest of the market is falling. Vodafone is a huge company with a 43.8% in total revenue, 77% in Europe, Europe and 16% in Africa. 69% to consumers and 27 is made up of business customers. It's currently trading at 76.9% below its estimate of fair value. Its earnings are forecast to grow about 5% per year, but its earnings grew a whopping 1,764% over the past year. But it does have a high level of debt, and although it does have a high dividend of 6.1%, it's not covered well by its earnings. And you can see it has actually managed to pay a dividend pretty much every single year. 
It's been around 5% and it's even been right up to 9% a year. Although it is classed as not being covered by its earnings, it's clear the company is making a big effort to pay it, even if it means not paying off some of its debts. But even with that being said, you can see its assets and its liabilities, although they are huge in the billions, it's not too far off, with a long-term view of actually getting almost double assets compared to its liabilities. Its debt to equity ratio is considered high, but if it's taken the company in the right direction, it's not always bad news. You can see the company does have big debts, but it also has quite massive assets. So it depends what the company is focused on. If it's focused on fixing the company to the future, then it might not be too bothered. It could sell off some of these long-term assets and put them into the debt, but it doesn't seem like that's top of their priority list. While the peer ratio is currently higher than it should be, the share price is currently only £1.27 and fair value puts it at a whopping £5.51. So it's currently classed as 76.9% undervalued. Even if that share price was to double, you could see some really impressive returns. Now, it might not come as any surprise that oil companies have done incredibly well so far this year, which is where my next company comes in, Shell. Ticker symbol S-H-E-L. I actually used to have their department covering Africa as one of my clients. And while working for them, I could tell the company was committed to positive change. The price of oil has been soaring and it's set to continue through the rest of the year. Shell has committed to net zero emissions by 2050 and has also rolled out charging for electric vehicles alongside hydrogen and electricity generated by solar and wind power. The government has also approved plans for a North Sea gas field, which was quickly declined in October last year, but with the current state of the Ukraine-Russia situation, it's no surprise that the government is keen to improve its domestic suppliers, which could continue to keep benefiting Shell. Trading at 26.3% below its estimate of fair value, it did become profitable this year, but its earnings are forecast to decline by an average of 15.7% per year for the next three years. And it does have an unstable dividend track record. The question is with things like this, is, is it already in the price? If they're already aware of it, then it's probably already priced into the current valuation. The P ratio of Shell is quite attractive. It's only at 8.9% and the peer average is 12.1. A fairer value for it would be 10.4, so it is under fair value. And the share price isn't set to grow all that much. It's currently at 21 and it should be at 28 but that still is a 26% gap. Other forecasts show with it at $52 right now, the low end is 60, an average is 68, and the high is 75. So again, it's showing an upside, which is in the high 20s, nearly 30. The dividend is impressive and it's 3.85%. It has been quite unstable in the past. It's been as high as 5%, even 8 and up to 10%, but it has dipped back down to around 3 or 4. So if you're buying it just for income, maybe not the best option, but if you want a company that's going to grow into the future with things like clean energy, I know strictly clean energy companies might seem nice, but Realistically, it's probably going to be companies that have got huge money behind them that are going to dominate the space. And with their new pledge, it seems like this is the way they're heading. So it could be a nice stock with some solid growth through 2022. The next up is one you're probably less familiar with, which is Smith & Nephew, with the ticker symbol SN. They're a leading medical technology business with a focus on orthopedics, wound care and sports medicine. The business is continuing to recover from the impact of COVID-19, but all of its business lines did deliver financial growth in the most recent financial year. Supply chain issues have been a problem, but these aren't unique to just this company, but it pays a very reliable dividend and it has every single year it's been listed on the stock market, which is over 70 years. It's trading at 36.7%, the estimate of fair value, with its earnings forecast to grow 14% per year, and it pays a reliable dividend of 2.62%. The P ratio is just slightly below the industry average. A fairer P ratio would actually be 39.2%, so it is undervalued. The current share price is 11.65, and a fairer value would be £18.40, which means it's 36% undervalued. And you can see its earnings per share are forecast to grow into the future. So this one, I think, could make a nice addition to your portfolio. If you want some growth plus a reliable dividend, it's not a bad choice. My six and a half company is a half recommendation because it's one I wanted to quickly mention. And it's one of the most traded companies and is very popular, which is a Scottish mortgage investment trust. Now I know it's not a stock, but hey, I'm mentioning it anyway. This trust has delivered some incredible returns for investors, 
but this year it's essentially just fallen off a cliff, minus 42%. And this is because it's got a large percentage of holdings in the USA and China, which have both had difficulties. Now, with these being such volatile instruments, it's always good to take a long-term view and while I don't think the worst is over, it may not be the worst time to slowly start averaging into this trust, as it's now at a much more attractive price point. I'm a big fan of Fundsmith and Smithson, which are similar to this in ways, which I'm going to start to buy more of in the next few months. So there's my recommendations. I hope they've been useful. Let me know down below, do you own any of these companies or have you got any that you think I should check out? If you guys haven't already, do grab your free crypto card from CoinJar and start earning some reward points. It's quite cool that I can actually just pay for things in crypto now and I really like the card. And if you're wondering, should you be buying these or just selling everything, you might wanna check out this video right here. Or if you've already seen that, then also check out this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cause I just wanna see the light